Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Finally Quit Born podcast. Today we're going to be answering a few of our listeners' questions, so hopefully this will be helpful to you as well. So welcome on the show, Mary. How are you doing today? I'm all right, Tom. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. What time is it there? It's quite early. Oh yeah, well we had daylight savings time, so it is 11 o'clock now. We lost an hour yesterday. Or, yeah, well before me. spring for spring forward so yeah we lost an hour last night oh, so, okay yeah, yeah. i was really now. confused you were, you were up a lot earlier than than usual today yeah like, what well i also <laughs> had to go to the i also had to go to the eye doctor and the only appointment that they had was at eight o'clock in the morning so i was up uh, you know quite early and haven't had a lot of sleep but i'm glad to be here to answer some questions for the folks oh. that need some answers yeah, amazing. Yeah. Th thanks again for coming on the podcast. Uh, I do Good appreciate thing. it. So yeah. first question that we have, I can get my computer to work. Right, here we go. Dealing with loneliness. I've actually seen this question quite a lot recently throughout a few communities. And somebody asked me this as well this week. So how do you deal with feeling alone? Like when your apartment just feels empty? One person who messaged me about this, I think had come out of a long term relationship and now was living alone and finding that quite difficult. And I've been there myself as well. Lived yeah. on my own. Lived on my own now since twenty. I don't know, maybe like twenty seventeen or something like that. Maybe about seven years. So I've yeah, yeah I've I've been through this and uh, living alone. And in the past, I probably would have found it. I would have thought that was what was triggering me. What was leading yes. to this problem is the loneliness. But now, obviously, I realise that that's not true. But yeah, Mary, do you want to go ahead and answer this a little bit? Yeah, that's that's the key. So there's like two words here. There's loneliness and then alone are kind of like two different things, really. I mean, I personally, I live alone, too. I mean, I have a couple of cats, so my apartment never or my house never really feels empty. But the thing is, is I am assuming that this question is being asked in regard to having the porn addiction as well. So it's yeah. like when I feel alone or I feel lonely, then I get triggered, right, to use the porn. Is that the, is yeah. that the, um, the, the text? Uh, what's the, so. anyway, my brain is not functioning totally right. Is that the, um, the way they were asking the question in regard to the porn addiction? I think so. Yeah. I think it was like, I'm feeling very alone, kind of feel disconnected from the rest of the world. And everything around me just feels a little bit empty right now and I've yeah. experienced that quite a lot where you just feel but I think it's that disconnection part as well is a big thing is it's like yeah you're on your own and so it kind of feels like you have no real ties to anyone else and it's like well yeah. I may as well do it because you know it doesn't really matter no one really cares about me I'm on my own anyway right. and it's not gonna like have any real disadvantage on my life because I'm not gonna like talk to anybody or no one's gonna see it um, and yeah, it, it basically, it's just like, I feel so disconnected that I may as well do this anyway. I, that, that's how I've experienced it anyway. It's like, yeah, yeah, you do just feel so isolated and alone and disconnected and kind of almost like just disenfranchised with like the whole world and like lacking almost meaning as well, I'd say. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and it's all be about like, like, what's the point? Right. And you can kind mm. of think, well, what's the point? I'm alone when it kind of comes back down to that underestimating the addiction because it's like you're feeling alone at this time in your apartment and feeling disconnected but that's that's kind of a temporary thing unless you've turned into a total agoraphobe and you never leave your house or whatever but that's that's assuming that while I'm feeling alone then I'm going to use the porn then I'm going to feel less empty and what's the point which is what's the point is straight up junky thinking um but that that's a temporary situation but then if you convince yourself to engage in pornography when you're feeling alone, which is normal, people feel alone, it happens, you know, people feel disconnected, but then you think, oh, I'm just going to use it now. But that's not what it's going to be. You're going to use it and then you're going to use it again and then you're going to use it again. And then you're stuck in this pornography addiction, which is going to create a whole lot more loneliness because here you are in your apartment alone when you could be going out and doing things. But I mean, how many of the people that we've worked with, I think every one of them on their lists of costs of this addiction is isolation. 
they feel isolated, right? They feel isolated and alone. So now I'm gonna engage in this addiction because I'm feeling alone, that makes me feel alone and isolated. It makes no sense. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to, I mean, everyone deals with loneliness and feeling alone. It's part of life. And, but choosing an addictive behavior to try to deal with the feelings of loneliness rather than just feeling alone and then go out and maybe do something, you know, fulfilling in your life. There's a lot of things you can go out and do if you're feeling alone or, just be alone. It's not really that horrible. You know, I personally, I kind of, I enjoy being alone. Um, but the point for these guys is that you're using feeling alone as a reason to engage. And if you, if you were addicted to something else, you'd use it as a reason to do that. It's not using pornography isn't going to take care of feelings of loneliness. It's going to make them worse because you can't relate to a person anyway, if you were going to have a sexual relate intimate relationship with somebody. It's another thing that's on everybody's list. I can't, I can't function in a relationship with an actual person, woman, whatever, you know, it's like, because this porn addiction is, you know, you're so wrapped up in it. So this yeah, think, this junkie thinking it kind of answers itself you know it's like yeah. so i'm gonna go ahead and engage in something that makes me feel really alone and isolated to deal with my feelings of loneliness but again most important thing is it's underestimating addiction because you think i'm just gonna do it just now while i'm feeling alone not i'm gonna be in it indefinitely right stuck with this thing indefinitely because when you engage in it that's what makes you want to engage in it and then you're going to engage in it more and more and more and like any addiction you're going to build a tolerance so yeah. you're going to want it more and more and then you're definitely going to be feeling lonely and alone and isolated and all the other costs that people have listed you know the costs of engaging in this behavior so yeah, I was in a relationship a few years ago and I remember at the time whenever she left, I'd find it hard not to relapse because I felt very lonely when she left and yeah. she lived in a different city for a long time. And so yeah. we'd basically have quite a lot of sex, to be truly honest, and then she'd leave. And I think yeah. looking back, I was definitely sex addicted then as well as porn addicted. So she'd yeah. leave and I'd have like this emptiness. I'd be back just completely in isolation on my own. And then in my mind, it was like, okay, I really don't like this feeling. How do I get rid of it? And so I'd end up having a relapse to temporarily escape for, you know, just yeah. a few moments while I engage in the habit. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, it just made it a lot harder to quit. It just made it so much harder to quit. And I think a really important part to get across here is that what happens in the brain is that you have brain maps where where they can get, get like connected. So neurons that fire together, wire together. And so essentially, if every time you feel lonely, which it might come up infrequently or it might come up frequently. I know Mary, you said like some of these guys who are addicted to porn are likely to feel more lonely because that's how addiction works is it does kind of lead you to feel more disconnected, especially with porn addiction for many, many reasons. But what I would say is that a lot of people as well are actually really busy and have really social like really active social lives and so if you're in that camp and maybe you're only actually alone maybe like half an hour a week or an hour a week because you have like this thriving social life and you feel good most of the time and then you're back on your own for only like half an hour like I'd say that's how I was in the past is I was really social and then occasionally I would be on my own and I'd be kind of trying to actively avoid that loneliness but what's going to happen is because the brain map in your in your mind like it's associated loneliness with urges over time, you're actually going to feel like it's going to be really hard, basically, to uh, to not look at porn, like to to deal with that craving until you realize that actually you have to create a distance between the loneliness and the urges. So essentially what's going on is you're associating loneliness with urges. And now we obviously have like a method and there's many ways to to deal with urges. Um, we, we have one and there's other people with methods as well. But essentially until you disconnect the urges from the loneliness it's going to be it's going to be difficult because you're never going to yeah. remove loneliness forever you know loneliness is going to come into your life no matter how much you try and avoid it 
And until you actually deal with the urge, it's just going to be a problem indefinitely. So Mary, Mary is there anything to comment on that? What, what would you say? Yeah, well, the thing is, is you're, in the, you're going to be in this addiction and then you're going to look for reasons to be alone. <laughs> you know, it's it's using it's using it as a reason now because of deprivation thinking, you'd feel like you don't have a choice. So, well, if I'm feeling alone, then I can do it. Right. But if you're in this addiction, you're going to be looking for reasons to actually be alone so you can engage in your compulsive behavior. You know, it's like, it's all just justification and rationalization. And the thing is, is there's people that, I mean, they have these really busy lives and people are looking for alone time where they can just kind of be by themselves or whatever. But when, when, when you have a porn addiction or any addiction, you're going to use whatever reason you can, whatever emotion comes along as a reason to do it, you know, because you want to do it, you know, and yeah. it's like, you feel like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I can't do this. And then it's like, when, if you feel like you don't have a choice, it's, oh, it's because I'm feeling lonely. That's why I'm doing it. No, you're doing it because you're addicted. That's why you're doing it. That's why you want to do it. Mm. At all these, you can use any, stub your damn toe. I don't care. You know, I like, I stub my toe. Oh, so now I want to, now I'm going to um engage in porn. You know, it's like, you're going to come up with any reason that you can, because you feel deprived, you feel like you can't do it and you want to do it. So you're looking for a reason to do it when the thing is, you don't need a reason to do it. You can do it. Right. But don't disregard the consequences. And number one consequence of addiction is it's not a part-time gig. You don't get to turn it on and off like a water faucet. It, when you do it, you're signing on for a full-time gig, you know, and then what you got to understand is once you decide to engage in that for whatever reason you're going to use, you don't get to stop again. It's more junky thinking. Well, I'll just stop again. Well, if stop if if it's such a damn good idea, why are you planning on stopping again for starters? That junky thinking bit itself in the ass, you know. So, um, but the you're gonna have to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, and that could take six months that could take you know because you guys stay on these streaks right that could take six months it could take six years it could be never guess what it could be never you know you get sick and tired of being sick and tired but find these reasons here we go it's i'm lonely you know lonely feeling lonely feeling disconnected is part of the human experience but we've learned that Feelings are not something we should actually feel, you know, don't feel the feeling, just, you know, find a way to not feel it. And whatever your addiction is, that's how you can disconnect it from it being about the porn is going to make me feel less empty. You know, if it's, if you're a food compulsive, if food's going to make me feel less empty. Oh, if I smoke, I'm going to feel less empty. Oh, if I drink, I'm going to feel less empty. Yeah. It's, it's no, it's the addiction, finding a way to get you to engage. Yeah, and like we could be here in six months, I suppose, with a different slide, and we probably will be <laughs> talking yeah. about dealing with, and then it will be a different emotion, and you know, it could just go round and round and round. So, right, if somebody does listen to this and finds a way to deal with the loneliness, then unless you deal with the urges directly, chances right. are you're going to have a new trigger. There's going to be a new yeah. reason to engage in this compulsive behavior because that's how addiction works. Is the addiction seeks out new triggers new reasons new yeah. rationalizations excuses because addiction is incredibly powerful and yeah. not really talked about very much and, and and yeah as you say mary a lot of people nowadays are kind of perpetuating this idea that you want to feel good all the time i think yeah. marketing everywhere you know marketing like by these billion pound companies are just kind of flashing out these messages just non-stop like yeah you need to feel good we'll make you feel good we'll eat this you know they don't they don't yeah. feel good or whatever and it's like it's hard because you can internalize that and it might be going on in the subconscious and you're not even aware of it but i mean yeah. if you're literally being told by these billion pound companies every single day it's like you against one individual like this messaging which is kind of saying like look you 
you're not okay to feel it's not okay to feel lonely it's not okay to feel disconnected it's not okay right. to feel horrible it's like it's really hard to kind of think in your mind like well actually what what do I do when I do feel lonely but but yeah I mean I feel lonely sometimes yeah. um I feel a bit disconnected sometimes but the other thing I would say though if you want like a little tip for loneliness because I've actually spent less time socializing this year than any other year by a long way I've still not seen my yeah. like my, one of my best friends I've still not seen him um and what I would say is that although I'm spending less time socializing, I have never felt less lonely. Um, so yeah, I, I do sometimes feel yeah. lonely now and then, but I'd say it's actually the the lack of meaning, which I think led to a lot of loneliness for me. So if you want to find more meaning in your life, this is just a little quick win. And this is kind of on the side of porn addiction, because I think they're totally separate things now. But what I would say is that find a problem that you're pissed off about in life. And there's so many problems that you can probably find. And then just think, right, how can I how can I solve this solution? One for myself and then for other people. And in that gap between the problem and the solution, you're going to find so much meaning. And that's going to just give you such a strong purpose and a foundation to build on that you're yeah. probably not going to feel that lonely because you've got like a purpose, you've got a vision, you've got a goal. That's what I'm personally doing. Yeah. It's like I'm pissed off that there's been who end this misinformation on a quitting porn for the last 10 years, leading me to ups and downs, no fap streaks and thinking I'll just quit for a bit and then having a relapse and feeling shame, lonely, disconnected, frustrated with myself and angry. See, there it is right there. Feeling yeah. lonely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So isolated. <laughs> well, yeah, literally. So yeah, that that's the problem I'm now trying to, trying to solve. Well, number one, I feel like I'm solving it for myself here on this journey with yeah. Mary and then also trying to help other people as well. So yeah, little, little tip if you are dealing with loneliness is I wouldn't say it's actually that much about um, the the kind of being on your own. It, it's more of a, it's a mental state. I, I started to yeah. read a book actually last year called Lonely. Um, yeah. Just back behind me somewhere. I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. The woman was just on about being lonely the whole time. It was so depressing. I was like, <laughs> I'm not enjoying this. So Maybe <laughs> we should go, get, like, give her a call, get her season. on the podcast. I want to say something. So let's say, let's plug in right here. How do you deal with feeling? And then we can just put a fill in the blank. Yeah. Right. How yeah. do you, so, cause like you said, you're going to plug in whatever emotion it, it is serving you at the moment. And so the, the thing about feelings, feelings change, they change on their own. When you sit with feelings, feelings change. It's not like you just sit there. Now I'm going to be like indefinitely, I'm going to feel lonely. No, feelings change on their own naturally. And you can learn things by feeling from feeling your feelings, right? But what doesn't change is addiction. If you use feelings to engage in your addiction, that's not going to change. You're going to stay stuck in your addiction, whatever reason you use to engage in it. You're going to be stuck in it. So, and then you get to have indefinite loneliness, isolation, frustration shame, unhappiness, all of it. You know, we could go to any list from any of our guys, right? Mm. And read it off. Every one of them includes feeling alone and isolated. So, yeah. I mean, I've said that a couple of times now, but it's like, this is a way to talk back to this junky thinking. No, you know what? Engaging in pornography makes me feel alone. Mm. Mm. So if I use this as a reason, I'm going to feel alone indefinitely. Yeah, absolutely. I will be and, alone indefinitely because you can't function in a normal relationship when you're functioning, you know, in pornography all the time. So, yeah. yeah. And just taking like a little snippet from the scripts as well. It's like just willingly face that discomfort, that temporary yeah. discomfort. I think temporary yeah. is such an important word there. So, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's temporary. Feelings are temporary. The feelings With are all temporary. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, I feel like we've wrapped up a bit of loneliness. Maybe we'll talk about this some more some other time. But the main thing is, to death. <laughs> yeah, um, I think yeah. the main thing is to just accept that it's part of the human condition. It's it okay is. to feel lonely. Nothing wrong with you at all. I feel lonely sometimes, as I say. I think everyone does. And there's there's never going to be a, a good reason to engage in the compulsive behavior. So sit with the loneliness for a little bit. Let it come. Let it go. And don't yeah. let it become an excuse to engage in a habit that's actually making you more lonely. Okay. Well, another thing too yeah. is just back to that for one second. Yeah, sure. Is is um is all of the advice that people are giving you for dealing with addiction might be nice 
for if you're feeling alone. They say, call a friend, you know? And the thing is, is when you're feeling really bad, you call a friend and you're wanting to engage in your addiction, they're probably going to be like, oh yeah, you, you should. So you feel better, you know? And the, yeah, so, or maybe meditate or maybe do some deep breathing, maybe do go for a walk, all the stuff that they're telling you to do for an addiction, you could do if you're feeling alone, you know? So, but this is a junky thought rationalization to make it okay to engage. Yeah, absolutely. So, anyway, sorry, go on. You were going to move on. To the next <laughs> no, one. that's okay. And, sorry. and also if anyone's listening to this and is like feeling pissed off, then that's, not good, but at the same time, it's natural. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised if you was listening to this and like feeling happy about it. It's like, no, it's yeah. going through addictions hard. It's going to require some discomfort, but yeah. it's a hundred percent worth it. Okay. So well, we could justify it. We could just say, oh yeah, you're feeling alone and you know, we want, we don't want you to feel bad. So go ahead and do it. But mm. you know, do you want to get free of addiction or not? Because plenty yeah. of people are going to tell you, oh yeah. I'm so sorry you're going through that. You should probably just use the porn and then you'll feel better. Yeah. But that's bullshit. I'm sorry. Well, th th this is the thing is I was saying this the other day to somebody, but I'm quite like passionate now about your method, the beyond compulsion method. And yeah. I can say it quite bluntly now. And I'm like, I don't really have any, you know, there's no overthinking. I'm just like, right, this is what works. Let's get it out there to people. And sometimes yeah. it comes across a bit arrogant or even offensive, but I'm like, well, you know what? this is actually going to be the best thing for your mental health is to just listen to what we're saying on the podcast or the YouTube or whatever, take this information in and go away and execute. Because if you do that, then your mental health is actually going to be at the optimal like place because you're actually going to quit addiction. So we could say all the nice stuff and make you feel nice while you're listening, like most people do. But if you actually want to quit porn, which is going to make you feel the best, then yeah. you're going to just have to face some hard truths. But, but yeah. Yeah, I know. And the whole the rage is all oh, you got to just be compassionate with everybody. Well, you know, tough love is compassionate, too. You know, mm, I don't really exactly. feel like I mean, it's maybe some surface level compassion if you're going to justify justify people's junky thinking and and ultimately they relapse into their addiction. Well, that's it might look like compassion. But, you know, it, <laughs> I've seen I've heard the remember letters of what people are actually, it's a, a tool we use, the remember letter, where people document what it really means to be stuck in their addictions. And that's, you know, it's, it's, that's the reality. And I can't, I can't um, have integrity with myself and ignore what I read, you know, yeah. the, 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 the letters are just so, they're so intense what people are going through that there's no way I'm ever going to justify their junky thinking just to appear like I'm a compassionate person because yeah, I am yeah. a compassionate person, but I want people to get permanent mental freedom. And I think that's the most compassion you can offer, really. So 100%. And yeah. to be honest, I've got my script right here, actually, just in front of me. So I'll read out a little bit of it. It's like, you know, on my, on my sort of remembrance letter side of it, it's, you know, f physically weak and drained, mentally exhausted, tired, disconnected and alone, funnily enough, busy uh, yeah. mind and distracted, strength in the addictive part of my brain, feel shame about who I am, stuck in my own head, set a bad example, uh, be stuck in this porn hell cycle forever without ever finding freedom, you know, I mean, that, that's just like a snippet, but, you know, it's yeah. pretty brutal, um, being stuck in this cycle, so that's that's why this is important and yeah i think it's really also it's really important also to acknowledge that like there's nothing intrinsically inherently wrong with people being stuck in this problem the problem yeah. really is that our society's led to you being in this problem and the lack of support the lack of help the lack of actual useful information out there is what's leading to it plus you've got the porn industry to deal with which is like a billion dollar industry or whatever it is yeah. with content just on like all social media now and it's being normalized so there's a million and one reasons to justify and rationalize this but then at the same time if you actually do want permanent freedom we have to just like let go of all those rationalizations and go right i actually want to quit this because this is destroying my mental health let's do this so <laughs> that's what we're here to yeah. try to help people do i want to add one thing to that is there that the words let go are super popular as well to let go but when you have an addiction it has it has a grip on you so to let go of something that has a grip on you that 
I mean, try to imagine someone's got a grip. Oh, just let go. Well, it's got a grip. So we can teach you to pry yourself loose of that. One junkie thought at a time, you know, one urge at a time. And every time you're able to get through that and not have to act on it, you can let go more. But just the idea that you're going to get into some Zen head space and let go, that's not going to happen either. So sorry, I'm probably really pissing people off now. <laughs> Yeah. I'm in the uh, I'm in a mood today, Tom. It's the, it's the dilated eyeballs. I'm telling you, there's just too much coming in. Ah! The the lack so, of yeah. sleep as well. But now it's yeah, good. Lack I of sleep and dilated it. eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah. And honestly, like I think I've said it before on the podcast, but I was genuinely arguing with Mary in my first few weeks. I was pissed <laughs> off. I was like, I don't want to believe this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but here I am, having worked with Mary and not relapsed yeah. once since. So I think it's worth yeah. it. Okay, You're so, not the so, first person to get pissed off at me, Tom. But you know what I always <laughs> tell those people? Can I please speak to Tom's rational mind? Because it's yeah, the addictive yeah. part of your mind that's pissed off at me. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I woke up the next morning and I'm apologizing. I'm like, oh my God, my junkie thinking yeah. was pretty intense last night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how do I deal with relapsing? This is another question that I received. So I just relapsed. What do I do now? I had two people ask me this over the last week or two. So it's a good question. Um, I used to have some content around relapsing that was full of self-compassion. Um, yeah. I, I don't know like what my approach is towards this, if I'm truly honest. I, I don't, yeah, I've not really, as I say, I've not relapsed since I started working with you, so I've not asked you this before. So what, what do you think, Mary? Just get back on the horse, right? <laughs> it's like, but you know, that that's actually not really a bad analogy. Um, but the thing is, is a horse will throw you, you get back on, you're going to break the horse eventually. But with addiction, you got to back it up. You got to not, not engage. And once you have the script, you don't have to engage because once you engage, I mean, again, just relapse is kind of looking at it like I did this isolated thing and now I'm going to be okay. Well, you got to back it up and not, and using the script, you don't have to engage. So then the relapse, relapse to me, that's the indefinite, right? That's the, got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's going to have, you know, could take a very long time before you're going to get back to really giving this a shot again. And in our program, you're going to learn and understand addiction and not have to engage. And then the relapse doesn't have to happen. But if you don't understand that engaging is what makes you engage, you're going to keep thinking, well, I can kind of get away with this, right? It's like, well, and everything out there is going to teach you that you can. It's just a slip or whatever. But then you're going to end up learning by doing, which is really unfortunate. And it's a really kind of a long, grueling, ugly process that, you know, it's Addiction is so underestimated that they teach people like, oh, this is just okay, or, or it's part of the journey, right? That's a real common terminology that, oh, yeah. relapse is part of recovery, right? We've talked about this. Relapse is part of relapse. I've seen it over and over and over and over. And people, you know, they come around eventually and go, okay, well, now, now I get it. Yeah, and I told you at the front end, you can learn by doing or you can learn by thinking. And with the program, you can learn by thinking and you don't have to engage because engaging is what's gonna cause that relapse. Um, what do I do now? Well, learn, try to learn by thinking. And you open up that door and it's going to be a lot more challenging that, but there are no absolutes. You know, Statistically, you're not gonna be in a good place, but it still can be done. Um, but it's well, what do you a, mean learn by thinking? Learning by thinking, yeah. Well, what do you mean by learning by thinking? Learning by thinking and changing the neural pathways and going, oh, guess what? When I engage in this, that that then I then I'm in it full time and learning and seeing that that is what you do, right? So, but you can think about that rather than oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna engage in it. And then, then, sh then I'll see, then I'll learn that I've relapsed by doing it rather than going, oh, well, this woman's been working with addiction for 30 years and she's telling me statistically, 
if I engage, I'm going to relapse. It's just like I've said to you before. Do you have to stick metal in an electric socket? Do you do that? Does anyone go, oh, I'm going to stick this metal in this electric socket and I'm going to hope that I'm going to get away with it. So you're saying- no, if if you, you learn by thinking. <laughs> so you're saying if you relapse, you're way more likely to then relapse again. Well, it's that's see that's where that's where I want to I want to differentiate relapse versus engaging. I'm going to engage in my compulsive behavior, then you have re relapse, and relapse is a is a package deal. It's not just a little relapse here, a little relapse there, a little then I'm gonna then I'm gonna stop again, then I'm gonna relapse again, then I'm gonna stop again. Relapse is you're in it now, you know. As sad but true, and I'm sure people don't want to hear that at all, but I've seen it a million times, you know, and but you can learn by thinking and go, okay, it's the first time I engage. That's what takes me back into the behavior. And then I'm stuck in it. Now, how many times do I want to go through that before I decide to learn by thinking rather than learn by doing? So engaging is different to relapsing? Well, what do you mean? Relapse to me is now you're in it, you're doing it again, 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 again. Now you're out of control, hmm. right? Where engaging is now I've done it this one time, hoping to get away with it, whatever junkie thinking I've used, right? How how do you define relapse? Relapse for me from the perspective of the porn industry or the relapse. porn. Industry. Yeah, yeah. Re relapse for me would be looking at sexual content and masturbating until i have an orgasm right so you're engaging in your addictive behavior yeah yeah yep. and see for me relapse is the whole thing mm. now you're going to do it again and you're going to do it again and you're going to do it again right yeah that's yeah. relapse that's the big picture of the relapse well it's interesting you say that because i must have told you this before but every time i've had one one engagement that's led to like this full-blown relapse so like what I mean by right. that is I've done streaks a lot of times where I've done 90 plus days as I say where yeah. you know I go on these streaks and then I, after like engaging once I don't think I've managed to do another 90 day streak for at least six months minimum like a lot of things go. had to change because then I was just stuck in it for ages again and then I'd just do another long streak and then relapse yeah. again so and then I'd be stuck in that cycle. So I remember between right. 2020 and 2023, like the end of 2023, that was kind of the pattern for me, was doing a long streak, relapsing, staying in the relapse sort of zone for like a few months, maybe do a few week streaks or whatever, maybe a few months. And then, yeah, yeah just kind of in that cycle of ups and downs. Um, but yeah, it's only now that I realise that actually it's not about doing 90 days or whatever BS. Instead, it's like you want to be free permanently because mm -hmm. one engagement is likely, well, it almost definitely is going to lead to a lot more engagements and it's yeah. going to be 10 times as hard to stop right. forever if you have one engagement. So yeah, it's, it's interesting because I really do believe you have to take like a zero tolerance approach towards this. And so I'm not saying like go and beat yourself up or feel a load of shame if you have a relapse. Yeah. But be aware of the consequences like it does change your brain and and just from a neuroscientific perspective it changes it massively as well like the chemicals that get mixed up when you have like one engagement it's just going to make it so much harder um so so yeah we want to get it down to zero and and that's what this podcast and this youtube channel really is for now is for people who want like permanent freedom we're not we're not aiming this podcast at people who want to just do like a few months here and there and maybe minimize it or moderate it we're we're really aiming for people who want that permanent freedom here and what you're not getting when you're going to convince yourself to engage and then you, and you said it, oh, maybe six months. And then within that six months, you're wanting it like crazy. You're just trying to control it. You're miserable. Right. But what you're not getting when you don't choose to engage that first time, you get to see what it's like to actually break free of it. But as soon as you invite that one and oh it's just going to be this one time this one engagement in now i said this before you've handed the addictive part of your mind a bunch of ammunition because now the desire is going to get even stronger 
They say, oh, well, I convinced them to do it once. I'll convince them to do it again. And now you have, it, it convinces you that you're either going to be miserable doing porn, being stuck in the addiction, or you're going to be miserable trying not to do porn. Rather than if you give yourself that opportunity, use the script, you don't have to engage that first time to see like, oh, guess what? I can really, 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 really want to do this, like really want to do it. And I can use my script. I can get through it and not have to do it. That's when you're going to really feel that reconnection or, or disconnect and reconnect those pathways that go from compulsive desire to acting on it. And, and when you when you don't give in that first time, that's where you're going to get super progress. Right. And you see that. And then it's like you don't want to give that up because that's a level of freedom that is like, oh, OK, now I get that. You know, does that yeah. make sense? There's yeah, an option other than misery and misery. I think, you know? I think the only thing I would say, though, is from my experience, there have been times where I have quit for a few weeks or a few months and I have felt really good, you know, I'd, I'd be on day 30 to 90 or whatever. And like, I, I felt great. I felt really good in that time. So yeah, like and then what happened? Thinking, sorry, what did you say? I said, and then what happened? And then I relapsed. And felt really <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> um, then you yeah, engaged, right? Yeah. There is a bit of a, an illusion of success, I think, because of the streaks. Like, I mean, that that time was valuable to me. Like, I can't. I can't look back on 2020 and say I didn't have an amazing year while still, yeah, no, actually after I engaged, I felt terrible. It, it was during the yeah. time in which I didn't engage that I did feel really good though. Yeah. And I think that is possible. I think it is possible to feel really good when you're on a streak for a few months. And I think that time is valuable, but yeah, yeah. then, then if you do relapse then you're just kind of back feeling pretty bad again. Most then, likely, anyway. Yeah. Then you have the intermittent reinforcement, right? And yeah. then you teach yourself, oh, look it, I can stop for a couple months and I can feel really good. So why not engage? Then I'll just stop mm -hmm. again for another couple months, right? So mm -hmm. it just it it, it's, it finds a way to get you. Yeah, so but it's really so incredibly valuable to not have to engage that first time and show yourself that you can want it with incredible intensity and not have to do it. That's that's where people like get it and then they don't have to they don't have to relapse ever yeah. again yeah. and they don't have to feel shitty like they're trying to control it or they got this monkey on their back or they're in recovery for life you know it's like yeah, well, so I think too, okay to I just I just had a change in my brain that I felt it you know I think yeah. to wrap it up I like, just say like I just relapse what do I do now I think my answer would be don't relapse again, like deal with your urges. And that's how you're actually going to deal with this problem of relapsing. Because I mean, yeah. the problem of relapsing disappears if you don't relapse. <laughs> I don't think there's any other way around yeah. it. Um, yeah. I think you can have tons of self-compassion and let go of the, the shame and realize that, yeah, there's nothing inherently intrinsically wrong with me and, and maybe light a candle and eat a nice meal like I've done in the past after relapses. But there's no better way to deal with relapses than just not relapsing. So that's, that's well, all. And stop beating a dead horse. Stop doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because all the advice out there, as far as I can tell, I've been looking into it is the same thing. It's mm. the same shit that they're giving to every other addiction, underestimating the addictions and you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, I think that I think they call that insanity, don't they? You I think know? that's what I, I think that's what Einstein said. Yeah. So yeah, expecting the different results, right? Yeah. 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 Well, stop right. doing the same thing and try something new. And yeah, it, it I, I sound like a broken record, but permanent mental freedom is possible, and you can you can feel it, you know. But you yeah. won't have to relapse, you know. But now that you have, I mean, if someone just did, it's probably the, you know, thou thousandth time they've done it, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, whoever uh, asks this question, you know. I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there then. I hope okay. you've enjoyed watching or listening to the podcast today. Yeah. And you can find us as well. If you do want to get the free training available at www.thomasmalling.com, there'll be a link in the description. 
thanks for listening and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks again to Mary as well for coming on. I can't even explain how grateful I am for all of Mary's help um, on this journey. So I call I call it a journey, welcome. Mary. I'm still in that habit. I can't help it. I need to get out of it. Like we'll do a whole podcast talking about about this for like an hour and I'll still use the old words. So it is it is hard, but it is so worth it. So I'm still still learning, I guess, aren't I? So uh, we'll get there. But um, yeah, cheers, Mary. All right, bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.